What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, October 10th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, why BP's elimination of 2030 oil reduction target is no real surprise. Next up, top Kazik Kazaka. I don't know what that means, but top field in the Middle East. Top oil field hits record output amid tensions with OPEC. Sources say that's in what states that is that in Kazakhstan. So we're talking Kazakhstan there. So I love it. Next up, projected supply deficits for key energy transition metals. Oh, if you've been listening to the show for three years, we'd have told you that. Next on Chevron sends letter to California legislator lambasting Newsom's oil and gas proposal, our favorite state. And then finally, Kamala says she won't enforce an EV mandate after years of pushing for one. Flip, flop, flip, flop. As we always know, we'll dive into all of that. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets and lightly touch on some of the stuff we heard from the EIA. Otherwise, it was really quiet on the finance front. So we will cover all that and a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? And let's rumble over here to why BP's elimination of 2030 oil reduction target is no real surprise. This is from our buddy over there, David Blackman on his sub stack. British oil giant continues efforts to adjust its business plan to make itself more competitive with peer companies. Translation, they need to keep up with Texas and Chevron and Exxon. They, they missed the boat. Elimination of the targeted production cuts allows for a series of moves earlier in 2024. I think what they did is they actually also said peak oil is not going to happen in their big BP output. This is a follow along to that, to no one's real surprise reaction to BP's latest move from the anti-fossil fuel activist community was swift and aggressive. The Guardian quotes, Greenpeace UK senior climate manager Philip Evans is saying, quote, this is yet further proof we cannot leave the future of our planet in the hands of fossil fuel bosses. It's clear that BP CEO Murray Ackenskloss has hell bent on prioritizing company profits and shareholder wealth above all else as extreme floods and wildfires rack up billions of dollars in damages, destroying homes and lives all over the world. Oil companies cannot be trusted to curtail their further destruction of the planet, unquote. What I find hilarious is that these are the same guys that do the BP energy outlook. And basically every year it's doom and gloom for oil and gas. Yet the CEO of the same company, this guy, Murray Atchison, used to be the CFO, is paying all of the bills for this oil outlook report. And they don't follow a darn sentence of it which i find just hilarious if it goes to show you you know what you say over here isn't necessarily what you do over here it's unbelievable i mean again as the title said no real surprise especially where oil prices are relative to where bp's acreage is i mean they talk about getting back in into the gulf of mexico they talk about diving in with bpx and maybe right. getting a little bit more into the permian i mean of course why would you not so it just, it cracks me up. That, and they just you know, sold off a bunch of stuff of their wind assets and stuff. And they're bailing out of renewable energy to go back to their core. Yeah. I mean, they obviously they still have about 10 U.S. onshore wind operations through its subsidiary BP Wind Energy. He also did, you know, this, this Murray Achen close also did go ahead and say they're looking at acquiring the remaining 50% of that joint venture they have that's called Light Source BP. So they're not, it's not an outright abandonment. Obviously, they're in the UK. They can't quite abandon it. You kind of got to keep yourselves as an arm. You kind of got to keep yourself at least an arm's reach away from it. So you can always pull it in and say, oh, no, we got a little bit. Oh, we got a little right. bit. Yeah, but we're also going to spend a billion dollars in the Gulf of Mexico. And we're going to go buy a couple million dollars worth of Permian stuff. So it's just, it, it's funny. But hey, I give him, I give them credit for, for, you know, what is it? The Star Wars quote, you do what must be done. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And and I'll tell you what, they they learn from Exxon and Chevron. And, and, and that is, they got to give back to the money and, and their shareholders. And the UK is going to force them out of the UK. Just watch what happens. 
Well, we'll welcome with open arms here. What's next? Well, let's go to the next story, Michael. Top Kazakhstan oil field hits record output amid tensions with OPEC plus sources say. This is out of Moscow Reuters, Reuters, as we say. Kazakhstan's biggest oil field, Tengiz, operated by U.S. Speaking of Chevron, operator boosted output to a record high in October. And they are the not, as OPEC plus is named top 10 global oil producer. Kazakhstan with Iraq and Russia as countries that have repeatedly failed to comply with its pledges to curb oil production. If you take a look at the numbers, they're it's pretty big. They're actually going to go from 699,000 to another 850,000 is where they're going to go. They're going to produce what they can to make money. Yeah. And I mean, who owns 50% of that project? Chevron. Who owns another right. 25%? Exxon. So you can't, all these companies, you know, they're signaling something over here, but what they're doing over here, and trust me, they're not worried about emissions over in Kazakhstan. I promise you that much. No, I, I think it's pretty funny. OPEC has lost the ability to control its members. Yeah, but well, it's, it's pretty go- crazy. They expect, you know, Chevron came out and said they expect 850,000 barrels of oil per day out of this prospect. I mean, that's huge. It's huge. It's bigger yeah. than Guyana. It's bigger than it's more than what Guyana's doing right now. Now, maybe not for long, but still. I think it's great. Pump all the oil they can. Projected okay. supply deficits for key energy transmissions metals. This this is an amazing from the visual capitalist. Look at these numbers, Michael. Cobalt and graphite is $85 billion deficit that we need just to mine those. We're down $120 billion in investments in order to get the lithium. We're down $80 billion in nickel. And for a school of mines finance guy, this reeks of like, Holy smokes, Batman, there's going to be some high-priced minerals coming around the corner, don't you think? Well, yeah. I mean, we we, <laughs> we wrote a white paper on this three years ago talking specifically about this stuff as, you know, you can't get this stuff out of the ground fast enough considering this is what people need. So pretty, you know, again, not not to not to shout out our own research, mine's mineral model, some white papers we wrote on energynewsbeat.com, but there is some absolutely great, great stuff in that stuff. And basically what we do is we explain this. We basically, if you're, you know, not to get nerdy, but we, we run your traditional capital asset model over this and say, hmm, wait a second, there is a massive one under investment in these metals, considering the fact that the supply is about to shoot upwards. So, you know, as always, the, the government screwed up when they came to prioritizing this stuff. They, they are spending all their time trying to make sure we have wind and solar when, wind and solar rely on the metals and you should have been funding the mines and then maybe the wind and solar farms might have had a better chance of being economic and you know uh, you know china went after the the mines first they got their supply chains done they got their battery cost a half of what we, ours are by doing the supply line first they pulled a exxon chevron on the u.s they did they did a willow bait and switch on us we love it but if you want access to that white paper that capital asset pricing model just shoot me a message linkedin or shoot me an email links in the description below we'll get that to you speaking of chevron Let's go to California, our favorite state. Oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. I think this is Newsom. He's about to take a bath. Don't take a bath, Governor Newsom. We do not need an oil slick. Chevron sends letter to California legislator lambasting Newsom's oil and gas proposal. He single-handedly could solve the oil crisis. You know, that is just amazing. California's own Chevron oil company announced August their corporate relocation to Houston, which is absolutely another blow for taxes. Billions of dollars is going to be lost in that. Here's where it gets Newsom accused Chevron and the claim refiners did not adequately 
prepare for maintenance events by increasing inventories and imports. We do not speak for other refiner. We believe this to be uniform. Governor's proposal will give the California Energy Commission more authority to impose new mandates for oil storage requirements on oil refineries in California, even as California is on the verge of an energy crisis. That's all they need. I can't get my mind off of Newsom jumping in a bath. That's that's killing me. Oh, um, talk about a dirty bathtub ring. Holy smokes. That'd be perma oil. I mean, what are you gonna call? That's truly oil-based drilling right there. Oh snap. Yeah, again, you know, in all seriousness, it, it's all a dog and pony show over there in California. They're just talk, 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 big oil sucks, big oil sucks. You know, is this actually going to happen? No, it's not going to. There's nothing that's going to come of this. No. And and then they import oil from Iran, Kazakhstan, you know, China, and, and, and they don't have very good ecological stuff. So they're doing more harm to the environment by importing from all these bad players around mm-hmm. the world. Why are their gas prices so high? Taxes. It's not because of price gouging. It's because of the record. They have the highest gas tax in the country. Yes. Hey, when you got that kind of hair, you got to tax for it. You got to tax. This is the tax look right here. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to Kamala here. Speaking of taxing, Kamala says she won't enforce an EV mandate after years of pushing for one. Holy smokes, Batman. Quote, contrary to what my opponent is suggesting, I will never tell you what kind of car you are to drive, said the vice president in a campaign stop on Mich- in Michigan. She will, however, favor regulations to drastically change the mix of gas-powered electric cars that are manufactured in the United States. This goes to her, her methodology of the Harris Biden administration currently under right now, and that is legislation through regulatory action. And they, she can say what she wants. She just tells her DOE and EPA to go do this, and they're going to mandate this crap to happen. Again, I come back to what I always say. You are allowed to change your mind. I actually think you people should change their mind because that means you're less wrong today as you were yesterday. The, what I have an issue with is just flip-flopping for political purposes. Yeah, I'm not going to go out and I'm, I, I can't get into VP Harris's mind and figure out which one it is, but I, I have a feeling, I, don't I have a slight inkling that it's the latter and not the former, meaning probably it's for political purposes. But who knows? Again, you're allowed to change your mind. I change my mind all the time, and I like to think that makes me smart because it means I'm, again, less you, wrong today you, as no. I was yesterday. The question- I, 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 I'm going to just give you this, Michael. Here's a little feedback from an old guy to a young guy. You change your mind only when you see facts and you yes, analyze the data, and you do that extremely well. You've also got testosterone running through your veins at a very nice level. You are not female. My wife changes her mind every 15 minutes. Dude, thank God you are not my wife. And more. <laughs> you change your mind based off logical reasons and it's justified. If she just came out and said, here's why I'm changing my mind, you and I might be inclined to listen. Well, yeah. And again, I think most of this is politics. But yes, thank goodness I'm not your wife. Oh, my work wife, maybe, but not my wife. No, yeah, no. no, she's no, she's no. an angel. She is an angel because she's got to be married <laughs> to you. Holy smokes. I meant to give you a compliment. And that came out like a backhanded. Holy smokes, Batman. <laughs> it is what happens when you do a show for three, you know, four years five years <laughs> running. You go ahead and say something stupid. But is that it? What else you got? That's it for me right now. All right, well, we'll go ahead and jump over into the finance section, guys. But as always, we need to pay the bills. Thank you for checking us out on the world's greatest website, (laughs) www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure this website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Go ahead and hit the description below for all links to the timestamps, links to the articles, and hit us up on Substack, theenergynewsbeat.substack.com. It is tax season, folks. If you need a tax deduction, if you need a little portfolio diversification, or mainly if you've always wanted to go out with your friends and say, hey, 
I'm an oil man. I own working interest. Boy, do we have a great, great prospect for you. Go ahead and go to investinoil.energynewsbeat.com to get access to the executive summary, and we will make sure we get you all the information you need. Again, there's nothing cooler than being to show up to your friends. You're, hey, what'd you do this week? Oh, you know, I just I did some spreadsheets. Oh, I photocopied some stuff. Oh, I bought some working interest. I'm an oil man. Call me Scott Sheffield. That's what you get to say. That, that there's some upside to that. But seriously, guys, it's tax season. If it's you need the, a tax mail, deduction, the mailbox money, Michael. True. We will ask you to go work on the wells. So just be prepared. <laughs> we, we, we we will ask you to go no, you know, drive the trucks. <laughs> we will go pull casing. We'll ask you to do everything. So you will have to you have to do a lot of work. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This is uh, I'm no. Kidding. But if you want to see the well, we want to show you the wells. Well, absolutely, absolutely. So point is, guys, it's tax season. It's portfolio diversification season, and it's passive income season. Hit the a link below invest in oil.energynewsbeat.com. My mom got my mom got mad at me because I, I apparently yesterday on the, the show I said uh, if you pay more, I basically called people who don't invest in oil idiots. So I apologize if anybody got a nice well done. <laughs> That's what happens when I do a solo show. It hey, kills I offend you. everybody. Finally, you're this is only the first time you've offended so, anybody. Welcome sorry, to- mom. At least one person listens to the show. Let's move on. It's a quick finance section, guys. We'll go run over top line numbers. S&P 500 up about six tenths of a percentage point. NASDAQ was up about seven tenths of a percentage point. Two and 10 year yields up 1.4 and 1.2 percentage points, respectively. Dollar index up about four tenths of a percentage point. Bitcoin down about one seventh or 1.7 percentage point, six, just above 60 at 61,064. Crude oil basically flat for the day, 73.49. Brent was actually up about two tenths of a percentage point, 76.91. Natural gas down. Down another three percentage points, mainly due to what's going on with Milton in Hurricane Milton. And first off, I, I say this one, everyone who's still recovering from Hurricane Helene, uh, thoughts and prayers go out to you guys. Whoever is on the Tampa and that West coast of Florida, our thoughts and prayers are with you. It's about to be, it's, it's going to be wild, Stu. It's going to what hit a cat five tonight, or is it four? The cat five. And it's, it's going to heat up. I've seen some horrific projections coming around the corner. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be great. Hopefully, everyone is evacuated. And for all of our listeners who are there, we hope you are safe. And we'll try to keep you up to speed. But that's really the reason I think we're seeing a lot of oil oil and gas price volatility on the downside, mainly due to the fact that, you know, nothing new in the Middle East has come out. You know, obviously, the word on the street is there's an imminent, imminent attack from Israel, specifically that could end up on the oil fields. But I think a lot of that is being tempered by some of the shut-in production that we're seeing from yeah. Hurricane Milton. We also did see the EIA crude oil inventory numbers come out. 5.8 million barrel rise in crude oil or crude oil inventories. That was compared to about a, a 10.9 million estimate by the EIA or the IAPI. So there's a little bit of a delta there. Reuters saw about a 2 million barrel rise. So above whatever Reuters thought, but way below whatever the API thought. We've we've got, you know, basically gasoline stocks did 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 lower or did rise a little bit, but that mainly has to do with what's going on with, with the Helene that happened. Obviously, Milton is coming. You know, basically Florida's out of gasoline, which is kind of crazy. That's also sort of what's helped crude oil prices. There is some stuff you know, obviously, you know, if, if you read our friends over at Reuters, they'll tell you that the macro situation over in China isn't isn't looking good. You know, there was this quote Tuesday out of China that said it was, quote, fully confident achieving its full year growth target, but refrained from introducing stronger fiscal steps, disappointing investors who had banked on more support for the economy, a.k.a. they want rates low, baby. I mean, if you, you know, if you haven't seen what's going on, every investor want rates low. Why? Because it means it's cheap money. They get more money to invest. So I'm not even saying I'm mad at that. Just understand the game about what's going on here. That's really it, though, Stu. I, I want to talk. What's going on? Give me give me two minutes on the Middle East right now. What's happening? That is really kind of the outstanding question mark we have right now when it comes right. to oil prices. Give us a 30,000-foot view. 30,000. And I, I, Dr. Al, I, I apologize. I got to get his name right. But he, I follow him on X. He just put out 55 minutes ago, conclusion from today's events and statements. The White House convinced the Israelis not to hit Iran's oil export facilities. I wonder how much it costs the United States taxpayers to pay him not to hit the oil and, and take them out. I don't know. I'm glad they didn't. I don't think it's good for anybody. I think that they should have controlled them through peaceful means. But 
So I don't know that we're going to see an attack imminent. Well, well, that's good. You know, it's, you know, our, our good friend, friend of the show who we've never met, John Killcliffe. He's over there at a, again, Capital, again, again, again. He claims that speculation of a strike on an Iran is worth about $5 a barrel. So, you know, do with that what you put. But that's really all I got, Stu. It was a pretty, pretty quiet day. Not much, not too much M&A action, which probably means there's some stuff coming up the pipeline. Earnings is coming up. So buckle up. It's going to get busy. It's going to get dicey. And when the Hurricane Milton hits the other side of Florida and hits the Gulf Stream going north, it is warmer. Expect it to gain speed and head north. Rut row. Yeah, no, not good. So again, thoughts and prayers with everybody who's there down in Florida and who is still recovering there from Helene. But with that, guys, we're going to go ahead and let you get out of here, get back to work, finish up your week. We will be off. Well, not off tomorrow. You'll hear who are you interviewing? What are you, what drop, what interview drops tomorrow? I believe I've got another one with Wasif Latif on yes. Gold. We love yeah, Wasif. We love our friends over at Samara Partners. You know, absolutely love them. Love what they're doing in the minerals and physical commodities space so i would hopefully everybody goes listens to that one we will be back in the chair saturday for our weekly recap take sunday off and be back in your ear bright and early monday morning so appreciate that guys well we'll let you get out of here with that Stuart turley i'm michael tanner uh, we'll see you on saturday folks 